I, I'm homeless, but I have I have my arms, I have my legs. That pushes me, that motivates me to work hard, to see that I can move from homelessness, then I become something in my life. I believe I'm going to win. How many goals have you scored in this? More than a thousand goals. These boys come from a very vulnerable background. They are using football as a coping mechanism. Most of them live alone, they don't have caregivers. Quite a stressful life they are living. Sports is more than play. Sports can change the world. Sports can improve the lives of individuals. Sometimes I do sleep hungry. Those are, those are the factors I do face. L'Ouganda, c'est un pays qu'on connaît assez mal. Il est situé dans une région où il y a eu beaucoup de conflits majeurs ces 40 dernières années. Ses voisins, c'est le Rwanda, le Soudan du Sud, la Tanzanie, le Kenya ou encore la RDC. L'Ouganda, c'est aussi le pays d'Afrique où il y a le plus de réfugiés et il y a aussi énormément de déplacés internes parce qu'il y a une guerre civile qui a duré 20 ans dans le nord-ouest du pays, dans la région de Goulou. La population, les Hatcheli, ont dû fuir la région de Goulou pour descendre à Kampala, la capitale. Ils ont eu un bidonville qui leur a été donné à l'époque par l'État, les Hatcheli Quarters, les bidonvilles des Hatcheli. Les conditions de vie elles sont extrêmes dans ce bidonville, surtout pour les plus jeunes. Il y a une association qui essaie de leur venir en aide, Youth Sport Uganda. Et cette année, l'association a décidé de constituer une équipe. Pour la première fois, l'Ouganda est représentée à la Coupe du Monde des personnes sans abri. Nous, on a eu la chance de suivre Karen. C'est elle qui a sélectionné les joueurs qui vont participer à la Coupe du Monde cette année en Corée du Sud. My name is Karen Muchiri. I'm the program's director at Youth Sports Uganda. We are heading to the boy, um, one of the boys who is going to participate in the Homeless World Cup. <laughs> we are in the Choli Quarter Slum. It's an internally displaced people's community, housing over 10,000 people, and uh, most of them have moved here from the north. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Huh? Should I come in? Good. So you guys, yeah. tell me, how many do you stay here? We stay six. We are six. We are six. Yeah. So how do you survive? I work once a week mm. at uh, the rubbish. Uh, we keep collecting rubbish around. Mm. But now the rest, they are just, at times they go to construction sites. So it also depends. When you get, mm. yes. When you don't yeah. get, yes. But they keep moving around. Mm, to look for work. for work. And then when you get, do you share or one man for himself? That's, that's, we have to share. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. situation at home is not OK at all. So each one of us at some point tried renting, but because we have no jobs. Mm. So it happened that we all we were chased out. Then we came up with a point where we can get a room. Mm. Then we all stay there mm. and see how life takes us. The only challenging thing is now something to eat. On that day? On that day. So you find yourself carrying something very heavy, mm. smelling, mm. but at the end of the day you have to eat something and yet you have nothing to eat. During the annual event organized by Game Connect, this is where I, I got to know about Youth Sport Uganda. So, when it was organized, one of the coaches from Youth Sport Uganda uh, spotted me and he had to join me in the Youth Sport team. So, they are using football as a coping mechanism. Oh, 
Every day they meet at this beach, play some football, joke around, make new friends, cancel themselves, bring themselves back together, and then go back and face another hard day. So the link between these is sport. Purely football is what brings them together and they're able to survive. I'm Joshua Pollard. I'm the executive director of Youth Sport Uganda. The way slums are designed in, in, in Kampala, yeah? The, the rich stay on the hill. And then the poor stay in the valley. The whole foundation of, of, of Youth Sport Uganda began by, by youth, the youth. There were about four youths who uh, resided in the slums. The, the youth that we are going to, uh, uh, who are going to participate in this Homeless World Cup uh, come from one of the biggest slums called the Acholi Quarter Slum. The story behind the, this big slum was that uh, during the early 80s and to the late 2000s, uh, the northern part of the country has been experiencing uh, a lot of war. So people started migrating because of the war from the northern part of the country to Kampala. Most of them, they didn't have where to go. So the government of Uganda had a big chunk of land where, where the, 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 the actual quarter is located, and then it gave it out for free. And that's how people started living there. What are the plans? How far with the plans of the Homeless World Cup? Our participation to, to, to this year's Homeless World Cup is basically to show the world that um, there, is, there are so many individuals who are not living in the best, uh, best of life, but uh, uh, given the opportunities, they can showcase what they have in terms of you know, sport, in terms of music, in terms of art. So um, the Homeless World Cup is the platform that we are going to use to amplify some of the causes that we are fighting for as Youth Sport Uganda. La Homeless World Cup, c'est la Coupe du Monde pour les personnes sans abri. C'est une compétition internationale qui existe depuis 25 ans. Et cette année, c'est la première fois que l'Ouganda participe à la compétition. So just because they're homeless doesn't mean there is no hope for tomorrow. Because for some of these boys, they didn't know that at the end of 2024, I'm going to board a plane. That wasn't in their dreams. But now look, we, an opportunity has come up and they're going to South Korea, which everyone in this community dreams about. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, hi, Ambrose. My name is Otim Ambrose. Uh, this is where I stay, this is my home. Outside there is my mattress. So in the evening when it's getting late, I put the things out. I bring in my mattress and then lay it down here and sleep. So this is where I sleep every night. This is my life. I spend most of my time with friends, cooking food. Yeah, so by evening it will be ready. Here we eat once a day. I eat one time in a day, and it's in the evening. One time in day? Yeah, one time in a day and in the evening. Life actually changed recently when I actually lost my dad like three years ago. Our dad was the only one working, he was the only source of income. We lost the house. Some of my brothers could not manage to go to school again. My mom, since we lost the house, the family is now separated. I'm going to struggle and make sure I work hard to bring back my family together. The 
right now my only hope is in football. I'm trying so hard. I train. Mm -hmm. I work so hard to make sure at least this is the only dream that I have that I can chase. And I'm so very excited about the Homeless World Cup. It has, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be an eye-opener because it's such a great opportunity coming from across the world and picking people right from the ground who are homeless, right? people with poor backgrounds, people who have nothing to say. We are going to do it not only for us, but we are going to do it for the rest of our brothers and sisters who are, who are remaining back home. How are you? And then are you ready? Are you ready to play? I'm ready. What is, are you sleeping at night or are you you're already dreaming about it? I don't sleep. <laughs> I don't sleep. Because you know when they tell you that it's going to be your first time to, to fly, so you always, you always. Thinking always, about always it. Thinking about it. And it's your first time to live, to fly? Uh, it's going to be my first time. So it's a dream. It's a dream. What is that message you want to bring back to the young people you are living here? I want them to know that being homeless is not being helpless. Not being homeless does not mean that you should sit down. Uh, that pushes me. I have my arms, I have my legs. That pushes me, that motivates me to work hard, to see that I can move from homelessness, then I become something in my life. This World Cup means a lot to them. First of all, for most of them, it's their first time to fly. From a very humble background, you get your first uh, passport and the first stamp is South Korea for the Homeless World Cup. So that already is a big thing for themselves and for their families. But also the fact that they are going to showcase the skills that they have. Right. Yeah, Allah, we thank you for this day. We pray that you give us a, a very good game. Enjoy the game, but make sure we win, right? All right. Uganda is really good at playing football, but the opportunities to get to the national stage are very low, or even the international stage. So for them, they are going to get that so easily through the Homeless World Cup, and they are super excited about it. They are hoping that someone will see them and take them on, you never know. But also they're excited to make new friends, to get connections from elsewhere, to share with other homeless people, what is your condition like, how do you cope? You know that encouragement. So. You know, that's a whole combination of things that it, this World Cup means to them and they couldn't replace it for, some, for anything else.